Most visitors to St. Petersburg know at least three facts about it. That it was built in an inhabited marsh or land which never was Russian and that it's very much like Venus. These facts have one future in common. They are not true. Welcome to our city of legends and enigmas. Find yourself among buildings which were built against all adversity despite the damp climate and floods, despite an enemy across the marsh, despite the people's wish to stay behind in cozy old-fashioned Moscow. It is a symbol of human will which rules the world and hushes waves. It was built here because the country needed access to the sea. The sea meant the world. England and Holland, France and German kingdoms, Russia couldn't stay enclosed in itself any longer. St. Petersburg is our constant hope that guests are coming. St. Petersburg was built in a hope of better life, in an attempt to start life from a clean sheet. In one failed swoop, it knocked out the old regime. It is a testament to one man's will to drag Russia from the Middle Ages. This one man was called Peter the Great. Here is the most famous monument in Russia. It is not a statue of freedom, quite the opposite to slavery of the whole country by one person who believed he could fight off the old world. This city was populated by men only during its first years, builders and craftsmen. Women appeared here much later. Maybe the late of a beautiful unknown lady walking around the city dreaming about something comes from this early year's deficit. It is a city which has no rural roots. It became the center of the empire before there was a place for an emperor to live in. It was built according to plan. A plan which put ideology above the individual. All our streets meet at precise angles, the architects had good rulers. There is no chaos, but pure geometry and balance. The city used to stay abandoned in summer. Aristocracy would leave it, but not always in order to go to the seaside or abroad, but to go to their summer residences just outside St. Petersburg, where life was kept as expensive and extravagant as in the city. Thus, a summer version of St. Petersburg appeared. Again with palaces, gardens, fountains, chapels, with everything but more stretched out and spacious. This is Peterhof, Russian Versailles, summer residence of the emperors. Everything here is over the top, water, marble, gold. The nature helps people here, the fountains work for 300 years under the natural pressure of springs from lakes above the palace. Mon plaisir, my joy. That is how Peter the Great called one of the palaces and that is how we call it now. Because opening of the fountains means that summer is coming and summer is different and very happy time for those who live here and visit. During white nights people who are here don't sleep. They ride, they walk, they dance. Because if you live in the city, you know the time for pleasure is very short. You have to catch it before long and gloomy winter comes back. You remember, there is one month in a year of sheer delight, and you have paid a great price to enjoy it. This city survived 900 days of siege. It used the first, but now is the second. It was christened three times and produced three revolutions. It has more legends that the guides know. They all tell about the same, the human will fighting obstacles. Welcome to Karintia Nevsky Palace in the middle of Nevsky, our main prospect. Enjoy the energy of working day and the peace of the romantic white night when you can read by the window without the light and see all the beauty of our city. St. Petersburg is hard to understand, but easy to feel. So for this you need to come and see it with your own eyes. Welcome to St. Petersburg World Congress 2012.